Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Wilfie here, checking in with another, uh, hopefully, less than five-minute rant here before I head into work. I'm going to go in a bit early this morning and try to conquer the last of a bit of weird behavior I'm seeing in a Drupal module. And uh, unrelated, but uh, I guess it's a rant, so I'll include it. I just want to say that if you're a Drupal development uh, or module developer, please document your stuff. I'm talking about not just code and not just comments here and there in code to be all clever and witty to prove your PHP mastery because really with a language as crappy as PHP mastering it is not something to be proud of. You need to actually document how to use the bloody thing. Don't just say what the module does. You need to provide examples, uh, specific examples, you know, accomplishing X with my module Y. <clears throat> uh, you need to incorporate definitions, explanations as to what each individual option means, where to find different administration options, and especially in the case of, say, the services module and the OAuth modules, uh, it's really important because those expose URLs to the public, you need to inventory and document exactly what URLs those are going to be. Otherwise, poor developers like me end up trying to uh, guess or just end up trudging through code and finding it ourselves. And that puts me in a foul mood. Just because I know how to dig through source code to find answers to questions doesn't mean I like to, especially when they're in your brain and you can just write it down. Anyway, that's not what I'm ranting about today. <clears throat> I just finished my uh, spring 2012 semester at... Uh, Valencia College and only had one course this term. Uh, life got busy and so did work. Uh, tried starting with three but couldn't deal with all three so I dropped two of them before the drop period ended. Um, and the one remaining was a C programming class, the C language. And of course I've done, I do C and C++ all the time at work so this was a pretty easy class. I'm pleased to report I got an A. Um, I wanted to rant about the textbook and it's not the, the selection of the textbook, it's what the publisher did to it. The book in question is just this very simple tome, Computer Science, a structured, appro oh, see, a structured programming approach using C, third edition. <clears throat> I ordered this online, I think from Amazon, through the Amazon Marketplace, because I know better than to bother with any of the uh, bookstores at the campus at the university. Uh, because bookstores there are just complete ripoffs. Everyone knows this, at least most students know this, and I don't think I've walked into the Valencia bookstore more than three times, I think. Uh, when they sell books that are exclusive to Valencia, like you, you can't get them unless you buy them from this thing. It was the activity books for the math, the, the preliminary math stuff. I'm in remedial math because I'm an idiot and suck at math and didn't pay attention in high school, so uh, go me. <clears throat> what annoys me about this textbook is nothing to do with its contents. I paid a fair price, a, a pretty good price actually, for this used copy of the text. Um, it's, you know, it's a very thick book. It's got over a thousand pages. It's like a thousand, there's eleven hundred, so eleven, eleven sixty, eleven hundred sixty pages. The binding isn't cheap. The book holds up well. The paper's a bit thin, but it has to be for a book this big. So, you know, I don't have any complaints about the book or its contents. I mean, even the even the printing is, is well done. I mean, the, there's no complaints here about the typesetting or any of that. Hopefully you guys can make some of that out. <clears throat> it's a good job on the print. Um, my issue begins by an explanation of who the copyright holder is. This edition is reprinted with license from Course Technology, a part of C-Engage Learning. I'll read the rest of that sentence in a moment after I get to what's on the cover. And what's on the cover is what pisses me off. Now, I did not choose this particular flavor of the third edition when I went to the Amazon Marketplace and bought the book. And I'm not upset at all with the seller for... Uh, sending me this copy of the book. I have no problem with the seller. My beef is with the publisher for doing this kind of crap in the first place. 
here's what it says. <clears throat> if you notice the cover, yeah, let's pull back here a little bit. There's a uh, there's a blue banner at the top and a big red triangle at the bottom. Now, red triangles mean trouble. Here's what the blue ribbon reads. India edition. Uh-oh. Now, <clears throat> the uh, the red blurb at the bottom. Get it in focus camera. This edition is for license is licensed for sale only in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Circulation of this edition outside of these countries is unauthorized and strictly prohibited. What an offensive piece of shit idea. This is exactly the same textbook that an American student can buy in an American bookstore at traditional American markup. Now the, uh, the copyright statement that I didn't finish reading says, This edition is reprinted with license from Course Technology, a part of C-Engage Learning, for sale in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka only. Circulation of these edition of these edition, nice typographical or grammar error there, outside of this country's, more English, is unauthorized and strictly prohibited. Now, mind you, the copyright is asserted in the United States. Uh, where is it? Right. All rights reserved, blah, 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 under the 1976 United States Copyright Act. So the publisher and the author asserts a copyright based in the United States. And presumably, the folks over in India get their own printing of the third edition. There is no change in the content of the book. It's written in English, all of it. There's no translation or errors or weirdness. It is an English book. And the subject matter is for anyone to understand. Of course, you have to speak English or be able to read and write English uh, to read the text, but the C programming language itself, despite using English keywords, is really language agnostic. It doesn't care what language you use to define your variables and your, your uh, functions and your, your other, the other tokens you use. <clears throat> what burns me up is that there's different pricing. Uh, not only is there different pricing for this book, which I'm going to put down so I quit fidgeting with it, <clears throat> different pricing for the book to begin with, depending on region. That's annoying enough. You can't just pick a price and sell it at that price in whatever the local currency is, everywhere you want to sell it. It's greedy, stupid, shameless. This this happens on the Steam platform a lot, the, the Steam video game delivery platform, and with video games quite a bit. There's, uh, like, if uh, a new game is $60 American, you know, U.S. dollars when it comes out, there's a good chance that it'll be 60 pounds in Britain or 60 Australian dollars and those are both worth more than a dollar, meaning the poor Brits and the Aussies are paying way more for a brand new game than Americans are for exactly the same material. Uh, the same with this India book, <clears throat> this India edition. I have no clue, honestly, whether they charge more in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, or the other countries where it's legal to own this book. They claim. I, I doubt, I, I dispute the legality claim that it's unauthorized for me to even be in possession of that book. You know, fuck you, publishers, for even suggesting that I can't own a book. I damn well can, and <laughs> I do, bitches. Anyway, <clears throat> the part that really gets me is that restriction. Not only is this priced differently and printed special, uh, especially just for this region, we want to make it sound like you're not even allowed to take it outside the region. You can't resell it. So, you know, screw the right of uh, the doctrine of first sale, even though that's a part of American copyright law. <clears throat> you know, screw that noise. You don't get to sell this outside your countries, uh, outside your home country, if you bought the India edition. I really wonder <clears throat> if some asshole publisher at... Uh, C Engage or whatever that other company was uh, is going to see this video and send the the goons to my door to confiscate this book, and in which case they uh, you know can bite me because I'm not going to put up with that kind of nonsense. And of course you know internet tough guy right. 
it's comical to think that some publisher somewhere actually is pissed that I don't have that I have an India copy instead of an American print for the book. The damn thing was probably printed right here in the States too and exported to India where it was used probably several times by different students and then bought for less than twenty dollars and shipped for less than five back to me in the States. <clears throat> I just hate that. That's part of the reason that these book publishers especially in education are losing their shirts and they should be. They deserve to. For one thing they pander to these creationist morons that try to shovel religion down our throats in science books, uh, textbooks, especially in Texas. And for pandering to Texas, too. That needs to stop. But beyond that, you have this selective nonsense. Um, it's not good enough that you buy the third edition. You have to buy the third edition for the United States. And if you try to buy one from outside the country, maybe, I mean, who knows what the legality really is. I doubt they can do anything to me, and if they try, you know, it's, it's two middle fingers and a lawyer, but <clears throat> what if they really did have a legal right to stop the package at customs and say, sorry, you're not allowed to have this, so I'm just out the money, and I don't get the book I need, which would, well, if it had been another class, it would have really sucked. This class, not so much. I don't, I don't think I looked in the book uh, once <laughs> all semester long as far as having to look something up pretty this, this basic stuff C is an easy language to learn it's not easy to master of course but that's a different different class altogether <clears throat> but this urge to restrict students and to shovel them into this must buy new every time kind of lineup you know shuffling the chapters around or even the questions in each in each section uh, so that you get homework assignments wrong from buying the wrong edition, you know, for math or science or really any of these classes. <clears throat> but, I don't know. It, it, I know that India is a fairly big market as far as programming is concerned, because they a lot of uh, folks out in India train and learn a lot of IT stuff, and they compete with us for jobs. Um, and so I guess to the publishers it makes sense. Well, they've got lots of money, so I should... Uh, jack up my prices in India and sell them special editions and then forbid them from sending them out over uh, overseas. I just, I wonder how much enforcement there is and how much money we piss away as a species on something that doesn't need to be policed like this. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's my rant. The college textbook thing for students is still a scam, as always really bugs me. Education should not be this expensive. It should be one of the most inexpensive to obtain and uh, easy to obtain things that a society offers, but the United States doesn't think so. They think there's money in it, so I don't know what to do about that. Right, anyway, I gotta go get to work, so thanks for listening to my mindless rant here, and I made it to 13 minutes 40 seconds, so yeah, right five minutes my aching ass. Anyway, uh, this weekend coming up, of course, some more X3 stuff. I gotta get some recording, recordings done and some planning, but until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.